Hi, I'm Cyril Moshko. In my native Russian, my name is Kirill Moshkov. The UNESCO International Jazz Day is a universal celebration of jazz music across the globe. Jazz community in Russia is also celebrating the International Jazz Day, believe it or not. This is a great chance to share with you some jazz from Russia. Yes, it exists. And yes, jazz music in Russia survived many difficulties. This year we also celebrate the Russian Jazz Centennial. On October 1, 1922, the pioneering jazz concert was organized in Moscow. Therefore, from October 1, 2022 to October 1, 2023, the Russian jazz community is celebrating 100 years of local jazz scene. So, why don't we give a listen to a Russian Jazz Centennial overview? The first local jazz bands in Soviet Russia remained unrecorded until 1928, when a Moscow-based band called Ama Jazz, led by classically trained pianist Alexander Tsfasman, released the first Russian jazz side ever. It was an American tune by Vincent Humans, titled Hallelujah. But Sfasman on that record documented the process that was already in action and continues to this day, adjusting American-born music to the tastes of Russian audiences. This is why the piano player rearranged the tune, removed the original quotation from Handel's Messiah, which would remain unrecognized by his Russian listeners anyway, and inserted another quotation instead, an instrumental equivalent to a line from Slavonic Easter service, which will be instantly recognizable in Russia. For those interested, the quotation starts at 2.35 into the track. <laughs> 
Russian Jazz Centennial, and we are celebrating the International Jazz Day. In 1938, the Russian band leader, piano player, composer, arranger and singer Alexander Varlamov was appointed the head of the Soviet Radio Jazz Orchestra. Here's a brilliant sight from that same year, 1938. The Soviet Radio Jazz Orchestra performs Varlamov's arrangement of Early Hour. When the Cold War erupted in 1946, the Russian jazz history was put on hold. All things that originated in the United States became officially disapproved of, and what remained of the early generations of Soviet jazz went underground for about a decade. Only by late 1950s a new emerging generation of young jazz players came up with their take on latest modern jazz styles. In 1962, the surprised European jazz community saw the first ever Russian jazz band perform outside of the Soviet Union at the Jazz Jamboree in Warsaw, Poland. Vadim Sakun Sextet was a nucleus of a new generation of Russian jazz musicians. Few were musically trained, most emerged from university amateur bands. The next tune was composed by the Sextet's piano player, Vadim Sakun, who was a PhD candidate in physics. A brilliant jazz improviser, he nevertheless couldn't read music and played by ear. Here's his number performed at the 1962 Jazz Jamboree, Fast and Good. <laughs> 
One of the 1960s most popular Russian jazz bands was based in Leningrad, the city which is now St. Petersburg. They championed the traditional jazz style and therefore were called an impossible oxymoron of Leningrad Dixieland jazz band. They also pioneered a rather enjoyable hybrid of New Orleans trad jazz style with Russian folk tunes. Here is their 1967 performance of a self-explaining title, Russian Dance Tune. <laughs> 
Soviet Russia had many modern jazz big bands in the 1960s and many of them were performing contemporary Russian pop tunes in their own jazz arrangements. So did the more adventurous small combos that practice a more daring, freewheeling improvisational style. Here's two takes on that. The same Russian pop tune written by composer Andrei Petrov for the 1964 comedy romance movie Walking the Streets of Moscow, performed by the Leningrad Jazz Orchestra, led by Josef Weinstein in 1967, and then by a quartet led by trumpet virtuoso Andrei Tovmasyan, live at the 1968 Moscow Jazz Festival. 
Here's the Russian Jazz Centennial. And we are celebrating the International Jazz Day 2023, a nice example of the early 1970s Soviet jazz music. Trumpeter German Lukyanov was one of the most accomplished Russian jazz composers of the era, which is no surprise, as he studied composition at Moscow Conservatory with none other than Aram Khachaturian. In this 1972 track, Healing, or Iscelenie in Russian, his Moscow-based band is joined by a genius tenor sax innovator from Riga, the capital of then-Soviet Latvia, Vadim Vyadro. <laughs> 
1970s, jazz rock fusion was swiftly growing in the former Soviet Union. Even the studio band of the All Union Recording Studio in Moscow, the famed Melodia Ensemble, or in Russian Ensemble Melodia, recorded a jazz rock fusion album in 1974. It was titled Labyrinth, and here's its most fierce track, Fiery River composed by trumpet player Konstantin Nosov and heavily featuring their great tenor sax player Alexei Zubov. The Soviet listeners could not legally buy Western jazz records, which simply weren't imported during the Cold War, but they had Melodia. Hence the stunning 4 million copies of their album sold in the 1970s throughout the USSR. 
continuing the Russian Jazz Centennial celebration for the 2023 International Jazz Day. The mainstream jazz big bands kept their positions in the 1970s Russian and Soviet jazz. The great jazz orchestras, led by the likes of Oleg Lundström or Anatoly Kroll in Moscow, Konstantin Arbelian in Armenia, etc. Here's a nice example of a Russian film tune arranged for the great Leningrad Jazz Orchestra, led by Josef Weinstein by the band's alto sax player, the future stalwart of Russian jazz education, Gennady Galstein. The tune was composed by Isaac Dunayevsky for the 1936 Soviet musical comedy movie Circus, and it's titled Moon Waltz. the Russian Jazz Centennial as celebrated by yours truly Cyril Moshko for the International Jazz Day 2023. The post-Soviet Russian jazz scene was a new scene altogether and it enjoyed a wide range of international collaborations which were impossible before 1991 when the Soviet Union ceased to exist. In 2010, the Russian jazz producer, composer and piano player Leonid Vinskevich teamed up with his son sax player Nick Vinskevich and a group of American musicians such as bass player Kip Reed, drummer Joel Taylor and the famed guitar player Mike Miller to record a folk fusion crossover project with a Russian folk choir. Here's their take on a folk dance tune, Ai Uzaiki. <laughs> 
Надея ножка лучше.
great example of how jazz musicians from different countries and different cultures should interact and make great music together was the Estonian-Russian jazz quartet of saxophone player Alexei Kruglov, guitar player Jak Sawyer, bass player Mikkel Malgand and drummer Tanel Rubin. They released several albums on European and Russian labels, some based on the tunes of Russian classical composers, such as this 2015 wonderfully ironic take on Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov's Bumblebee Flight. My name is Cyril Moshko. In my native Russian, it's Kirill Moshkov. When the Russian jazz centennial was yet forthcoming, I was asked to write a script for a feature-length documentary movie telling 100 years long turbulent story of jazz music in Russia. I did. For the 2023 International Jazz Day, I would like to conclude the Russian jazz history overview with the track that became the title song of our movie. The tune was written in 1933 by Russian composer Lev Knipper and became basically speaking one of the most popular tunes in Russia for decades. So popular that Benny Goodman Orchestra performed it during their 1962 tour across the Soviet Union. 60 years later, in 2022, Russian jazz educator, arranger and trombone player Pavel Avchinnikov wrote a new arrangement of the Middlelands, or Polushka Pole in Russian, for our documentary. In this 2022 recording, it is performed by Igor Butman's Moscow Jazz Orchestra. (laughs) 